Uh, welcome to this special uh, webinar, uh, a virtual roundtable. We are so used to it now, uh, though the real world is also opening. This special uh, virtual roundtable is uh, in partnership with uh, Tabula, uh, brought to you by Exchange for Media in association with Tabula. And the focus today is the consumer durable category. And, 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 and the way it has changed over the last uh, almost close to two years, also, the discussion is important because we are at the start of uh, at the start of uh, festive season, and which means that a lot of uh, consumer act activity will be witnessed. But it's it's with a changed mindset. The behavior has changed. The way uh, consumers interact with brands has changed. These are the uh, some of the key discussion points that we will have in the course uh, over the next. Uh, one hour, uh, and, and I might uh, uh, also uh, add that today uh, we have some of the most uh, eminent uh, marketing leaders with us. I want to introduce them. We have Mr. Amit Tiwari, VP Marketing Havens, uh, uh, Mr. Amit Sethia, CMO Siska, Mr. Adil Sanwari, Head Digital Media and Transformation, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, uh, HP India, Mr. Bharat Arora, a country manager, uh, India Tabula, and Mr. Prashant Dal, marketing director, AO Smith India. Welcome all of you uh, to today's uh, discussion, and thank you so much for taking our time. I want to come to you uh, first, uh, Mr. Sekia, straight away diving into my first question. Um, you know, we are, at the, as I mentioned, uh, getting into a festive mood, uh, but in a very changed uh, circumstances. The setting is very different. The sentiment is very different. In this kind of a setup, uh, in your view, how can brands make the most of the key promotional period? Is there, are there set rules that brands need to follow to make it more effective in the context that we are in? Uh, thanks, Ruhel, for the question. And uh, I'm so glad that I'm a part of this discussion today because I can see a lot of synergy getting created uh, and because of the fact that it's a consumer durable category. So, uh, you know, coming back to your question, Ruhel, uh, you know, it's very imperative that, you know, the moment you think of the promotional, you know, period or the festive season, you know, you're bound to think about discounts, right? Uh, sale, et cetera. I think that is what comes to our mind and, and more so as an Indian customer, right? But I think um, Personally, the way I have seen this entire quotient like sort of like coming down over these last couple of years is tremendous. Um, you know, like let us look back, say around 10 years or so, uh, you know, we used to have these uh, discount based, you know, events maybe twice or twice in a year, right? Not beyond that. Uh, you know, we used to go to our regular retail uh, market or the mall also, and we used to talk about that. Diwali pe khari denge. you know, that was the conversation that people used to plan in advance that, you know, we are going to buy these items, etc. Uh, you know, during this specific uh, time and festival when you used to get discount and discount was not very uh, across the year, which actually became a phenomenon, you know, later on. Now, today, if you go to any mall, you'll find that discount banner always hanging, you know, uh, you know, next to the main gate. The only thing that changes is the percentage, right? So I think over a period of time that discount as a word or as a proposition, I think personally has lost its, its, its sheen right now. Uh, you can even talk about e-commerce right now, you know, like I know there are these big events that happen, you know, the BBDs of the world, you know, wherein you get amazing discounts, but look at the, the way the customer approaches that space. Like, you know, he will look at as to what all product he wants to buy and from which brand he should be looking at that product. Uh, obviously basis, the review, the rating, uh, the preference, etc. And then he will go and buy that product and maybe whatever discount he will get, he is happy with that because ultimately he's buying that brand. So I think, uh, uh, you know, over a period of time, I don't believe now discount or, you know, or anything which is close to this proposition is kind of a guarantee to make the most out of your promotional uh, period. Um, you know, if you look at the uh, example of this brand, Siska, my narrative is always brand led you know, when I go out and talk, because we have been talking about the warranty, the power saving, uh, you know, um, or the usage life of the product, etc. But we have never spoken about, uh, you know, a specific product or egg pig free lelo types 
etc so i think that's where i'm coming from that if you really want to make the most out of your promotional period it is very important for a brand to really figure out and check as to what you are doing otherwise in the not so promotional period right mr tiwari to you uh, being uh, uh, representing a very broad uh, you know being the marketing leader in the space uh, tell me uh, we know that digital age consumers make the decisions uh, in a certain different way than it used to be how can how can brand the overall maximize the, you know the promotional period uh, in 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 this changed circumstance thanks thanks rohil and uh, good evening everyone uh, i think the larger piece uh, rohil which you mentioned which amit also somehow try to cover about i uh, see in last two years and i think last two festival season last year and this year the entire consumer purchase pattern has changed big time the desired decisions have changed big time it is nothing to do with what is available and where it is available it most important is what i want and what is the period that i really want and it can be whatever the platform are previously you won't believe it you haven't seen that big ticket items which are which are costing 50000 60000 70000 can be bought online today so irrespective today whether i have a discount not discount but i need something on that particular requirement i can buy it where it is available for me and it can give me a delivery which is much better there are there are products in which many categories require installation people are coming out with different ideas where you can actually do it yourself without even using any particular external interference uh, to build it so more more importantly it's not about where you are actually selling what is the promotional period it's about what is the change of the entire pattern of consumption from a consumer standpoint are you able to match or are brands able to match that entire thing a digital is no more a medium it's a part of life so it is not about whether you advertise or you don't advertise today your life evolves around digital so anything that you do whether you buy a product whether you you require a service for the product or whether you decide about the product it is it is the digital who actually do it how do you do it is most important and how do you reach that narrative of the consumer that that's very critical in the entire journey too thank you right right very well said um, mr sarwani i want to come to you at this point you know uh, in your view are there any set of rules to make uh, you know uh, brands uh, that brands can make it more uh, connected with feel more connected with consumers and and have a, have the maximum of the promotional period Uh, how is your brand looking at this what are you personally uh, you know doing to enable this hey, thanks, sorry, thanks. Thanks. Sorry. sorry is that question for me yes yes mr sanwari sorry yeah thanks rohit uh, hello everybody um, you know it's a when i think about the festival time I, especially in india you know it's, it's mostly about uh, togetherness it's mostly about celebration it's mostly about being with your family right i think uh, where we've hit the chord right is about creating that kind of a communication uh, which which makes the consumer believe that what we're trying to do as a brand is bring them all closer right we're trying to make that bond stronger i'm sure that all of you must have seen our diwali ads in the past couple of years that we've been doing right um, they've created that kind of an impact uh, that everybody today is expecting hp to bring out uh you know the better version of a last diwali campaign that we did right so our objective is very clear see we live, we today especially in our category right i mean we living in a world where we don't need to tell too much to the audience or the customer about what the product is all about you know they they do their own research you know they 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 have multiple platforms today uh, on the web where they can research about the product no more about the product there is a uh, there is a tons and tons of video and reviews that goes on that the customers can figure out what to buy right so um the responsibility from a brand's uh, point of view is to uh, how do i make sure that you know two ways to look at it uh, people who are the switchers and i know for a fact that every year over 50% of your uh, you know category customers are uh, switchers right i mean today they are with hp tomorrow they might be with some other competition right and similarly uh, there is a set of brand loyalists that i need to take care of right so uh, in my view the, the tactics that we apply is uh we look at the data overall and the way we bifurcate is between brand switchers and brand loyalists right brand switchers um of course because it's festive time everybody is coming to get a good deal uh you know make them feel special make them feel uh you know that uh, this brand is worth maybe i don't know whether discounting is the right word or whether whether giving them something additional is the right word uh, number one is that number two from a brand loyalist perspective this is the time to make them feel special in terms of giving them something exclusive 
right? Customizing things for them. So I think uh, from HP's point of view, these are the two, three things that, uh, and, I, and again, um, you know, sorry to say, but there is no rule to it. There is no silver bullet uh, that will, you know, sort of assure uh, success for you as a brand, but uh, it is always going to be a hit and trial method. We all learn uh, as we do and sort of move forward with one, one activity or the other, right? So I think the best way to do is create that bonding between you and the customer because I, I don't have a dearth of awareness today for the brand. Uh, what I need to do is to engage my audience in a way that they know this brand is still cares for me, has something exclusive for me, and will do something special for me uh, year after year, right? So uh, I would I would say that's our Ramban sort of thing. Lovely, Mr. Dar, your your thoughts on this? So I would uh, tend to agree with uh, uh, Mr. Sanwari, uh, but I would just like to uh, keep. Uh, uh, table across a uh, couple of perspectives. One is that how, uh, you know, the emergence of e-commerce platform has, uh, you know, affected the appliances industry. I think uh, it is now, uh, if you look at uh, uh, the last couple of years, the contribution to the business of e-commerce as a platform has just doubled. So I think uh, the, the kind of focus in the marketing mix that you have on e-commerce has gone up by leaps and bounds. So things like, you know, Great Indian Festival and the Big Billion Days are definitely revenue earners for you. So here the challenge for the brands is basically how to connect with the customers along with the value proposition that you are giving. That value proposition can be in terms of price, it can be in terms of the the, the service that you're offering. In, in, it can also be in terms of how much, uh, you know, affordability you are promoting in terms of some of your key product lines. So, so uh, as a brand, you need to be very focused in terms of what are you planning for, uh, for, uh, for uh, these big festivals, which are now uh, contributing to a major part of your total revenue, right? You need to, you need to obviously match your content with uh, uh, with the with the intention of the consumer, so basically matching content with intent has to be the key. Uh, there are things like uh, you know uh, exchange offers, no cost EMIs, uh, one day service, etc., which which are uh, uh, big drivers on these platforms uh, these days. So that's very important. Also, you need to understand how much efficiently you are planning the media. And uh, 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 it will be very important to monitor the performance of your uh, conversions on these platforms on a, on a daily basis, because, uh, because the things, the bits keep on changing uh, by, the, you know, by the hour on these platforms. So it's very important to monitor and get the correct ROI for your brand. So, so that is, I think, very important. Of course, I mean, the overall... Uh, uh, you know, as I was telling you that uh, you need to understand uh, how to match the, the creatives or the content to the, you know, to the intention of the consumer at what stage of purchase journey he is. So address each of his, you know, uh, journey with a creative, which basically uh, translates into a storytelling and aids him to finally from an, uh, you know, kind of an awareness interest to a conversion uh, uh, awareness uh, stage to a conversion stage. So it's, and uh, uh, also with all the advertising uh, monies uh, shifting into digital these days, it's very important to, you know, have a very seamless kind of an integration between your offline uh, strategy on media, uh, mixing with the online strategy on digital. So basically they have to be complementary in nature. So, right. the, so the, the, the word is be agile, be watchful and deliver the optimum ROI. Right. And the way uh, consumer sentiment has got affected, I think they want definitely more value out of the purchase. You know, I think brands cannot, uh, you know, brands have to take that in view. I want to come to you, uh, Mr. Arora, at this point, you know, uh, you bring in a different perspective uh, than the other panelists here. What is your observation uh, uh, given uh, how brands can get the maximum out of this promotion period? So, uh, I think what uh, I, I, I have actually completely agree with what Sun also said, Adil was perfectly all right saying that you know, the market is moving toward people are already aware. So it is very, very important for yourself to make sure that you build 
uh, you know such a kind of a, a connect or a bond with your customer so that you know they it's more of a pull strategy that we should put across and of course during the challenging period everything was getting involved consumer behavior was changing uh, it was very very important for all the brands coming from our side for example tabula is one of a, a very reputed performance platform where uh, you know brands come to us just to make sure that they build their uh, from middle funnel to the bottom of the funnel and we see huge changes coming up where everything was changing from what prashant uh, mr dhar was saying about the creative side uh, people were talking uh, trying to talk to the customers uh, empathy with them in terms of the hard times but talking in their language so every creative that was playing at uh, tabula was very very uh, you know much bonded much connected talking about not only selling but it was telling a story story which connect with them you know what mr uh, sanwari was talking about building the connect so that was actually coming through the entire funnel where people were trying to build some of awareness asking about people's health but eventually you know trying to talk to them build bond asking about the wellness and then suddenly possibly you know tell them that you know this is uh, the place that possibly that can help you do this is a place you can buy what what mr tiwari was also you know trying to touch about that it is not about where and when you want to uh, you know buy it so we saw uh, specifically at tabula perspective we saw you know consumer were making purchases we never saw before okay so uh, in terms of the bottom line in, for example talking about the consumer electronics or consumer durable as, as a vertical which we saw people were buying first time online which we never imagined so of, of course because our our kpis given to us was changed from visits campaign everything was talking about cpa because it was business survival and we saw that you know how uh, various brands come over and talking about various acquisition strategies and we saw uh, what mr tiwari beautiful design that said that this is even if somebody is like 2 lakh rupees inr and they were okay to buy at this point of time so that was very different consumer behavior so uh, right very impressive to see yeah right you know um, i mean there was a point mentioned that uh, today uh, the brands alone don't do their work to reach out to consumers the consumers do a lot of research you know especially um, in these times before they make any purchase and we have often asked this question that what were the learnings what are the learnings from the last two years and i mean this always stays relevant because every month there is a new development there is a new approach there is a new strategy in place mr sethi is starting with you again talking about the learnings again you know because uh, we had certain learnings and the second wave came there was a different learning there was a different pivot towards a, a different strategy what are the overall learnings as we enter a festival season because this is the second time in the last uh, since the pandemic started that we are close to this with what is the kind of uh, rich enrichment in terms of learnings that you are going with with your brand and your promotion so um, i will uh, you know point out quickly some of the key learnings that we as a brand i would say and not as a marketer right because at a brand level there is so much that you discover and learn i think so uh, first and foremost was the fact that um, you know see consumer durable still largely is is a distribution driven sort of a business right and i think that's where we realize that we need to optimize um, you know this particular distribution uh, you know aspect of the of the brand so i remember uh, during the first lockdown the government of india actually announced uh, say example you know the grooming appliances as you know the semi essentials for for the consumers and that is where we we actually optimized the distribution channel for this very category and ensured that the products were placed across all the medical shops in the country because it was the only medical shop along with the kirana shop that was actually open for the indian consumers Uh, apart from that we also you know went back to technology you know to ensure that you know how we can optimize even that aspect you know so example if i talk about um, led so the usage of this very product which was always looked at from the illumination perspective went beyond that and actually was used in the space of disinfection actually because suddenly people were very you know worried about as to how they can take care of certain smaller items to disinfect on day to day basis so we were using these kind of specific uh, led uv products uh, i remember um, marketing was in such a tight spot because of the fact that uh, you know these uh, you know uh, uh, 
special treatments to the content that we give was always uh, you know felt to be very important right but suddenly we realized that you know we don't have access to these kind of studio treatments so suddenly we realized that you know we were churning out the content without those you know final glossy treatments and still it was you know clicking with the right audiences right because the content was very authentic so i think this was also one of the learning that we realized um apart from that uh, yes i think uh, the demand for the smart home products soared to new heights because of the work from home culture uh, people were very much open about this new uh, you know portfolio uh, you know and they were also interested to look at as to how they can convert their existing white goods or consumer durables into at least if not full smart at least to semi smart right so all these solutions were tackled beautifully during these last couple of 18 months or so i would say and yes we also entered a very new category because uh, of the smart watch i would say with a very disruptive price because suddenly everybody was talking about their health and fitness levels right so i think these are you know some of the key learnings that we you know witnessed over these last uh, you know couple of uh, months put together which is amazing actually as a brand right uh, mr tiwari uh, not just as a brand but as a marketer what are the big learnings for you and uh, what are the new insights that you gather so rohan i think uh, first thing uh, whatever as every marketer and since uh, we are talking the marketing as a fraternity and when i talk to a lot of my marketers in last 20 months what has happened is whatever we have learned for the 20 years that needs to be rebooted all the systems of marketing need to be rebooted that theories and principles was fine but everything has changed uh, and what has happened to this rebooting is that you need to start relearning new tools and new rules of the game and what has become the three the main rules of the game is three t's trust transparency and technology you any brand that you actually operate you need to have a trust which is a very very highest order otherwise you will not be able to build any particular substantial gain in any of the planes that you have it has to be absolute transparency that you need to build across the entire spectrum because consumer is far far more important and is more sensitive towards any brand engagement that it's doing technology has become a part and parcel of everyone's life you see today technology transformation people are talking about for last many years but the way it has technology transformation happened for a four year old till a 80 year old the transformation has been absolutely absolutely high in every front and that is how it actually defined and redefined the rules of the game if you are up in all the three t's that are actually talking about which is trust transparency and technology you are much ahead of the game and your brand is much more visible in terms of what you need to do if you are lacking in any of the things you will definitely find a huge impact in the outcome whether it in terms of your brand response or in terms of your brand sales that will be reflected so that is how the rules have actually changed and the traditional principles just remain as a principle because you need to start building and rebooting yourself in a bigger fashion right trust transparency technology very well put uh, mr tiwari thanks for sharing um, mr sanwari uh, how about you how would you define your learning um i we were not prepared for this none of us were prepared for this right so um saying that we already have um certain weapons in our arsenal is i don't know it's the wrong way to put it across right so i think the uh, the best learning that we've had is uh you know how important it is to be agile how important it is to be extremely flexible uh, especially in our category right when we're talking about um a cycle where we know that the person who's bought a laptop uh would think about buying another laptop in in the next 5 years right and so is so is the case with printers largely right so um all of a sudden people stop going to office all of a sudden people children stop going to school right uh and you know, earlier what used to happen is um uh, with with a parent you know if if, if at a kid at the age of 8 to 14 typically uh, you would have whenever that your father or mother is coming back from office you would have a spare laptop and then the kid would do anything on the laptop that he or she wants to do right uh, with school projects or whatever for that matter now all of a sudden everybody needs a laptop because everybody is working from home and so are the schools are running from home right so it the way we sort of identified the problem that hey you know there is a problem of people not having an extra laptop or a printer and there is also an opportunity here where we can sort of make sure that we are not trying to oversell the product by saying hey you know what why don't just because you're sitting home why don't you buy another laptop whether you need or you don't need it right what we did is uh, uh, we sort of we 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 initiated another way of looking at this entire category by saying this particular product is to do with learning right so we if i if i would say we sort of started this 
category altogether from a learning perspective is that if this one laptop which is typically going to help your kid to do all the you know school projects or homework projects that's been given by the school right and you don't need uh, your parents laptop we know that you can't use that laptop similarly we bundle that kind of a thing where we said one laptop and one printer is going to fulfill your needs uh, from your kids perspective where you don't need any spare product to be uh, to to be buying from right and we also knew the fact that at the end of the day we can't fight with the smartphones right everybody has a smartphone it's just, it is very stupid on our part to say hey you know what uh, today we can work on a smartphone and uh, you don't need a laptop for that matter right or you can take a laptop plus a smartphone as well right so i think we were not talking about smartphones we said you have your smartphone you can do multiple things on your smartphone that's great but this as a package uh, you know you need you need to print stuff you need to have a physical form of your project and your uh, you know your your school project and homework in hand to to figure out and do things on your own right so uh, this these are the learnings i would probably say that helped us create this kind of an opportunity within the market number one number two is from an offline store perspective and i think somebody mentioned initially about how challenging these times were where you would try and create a lot of footfalls to the stores but unfortunately that can't happen because all the stores are shut right so as a category we were still falling behind in terms of the customer wanting to take the demo of the product i guess definitely times are changing and people are moving towards buying this category on e-commerce portals but today also when you know people come in the store the first thing they do is they do the research from across the globe and then they want to come and do the touch and feel of the product right so we initiated things like video demos right with our with our isps or in store promoters right so these were the facilities that were not earlier available right we created we supported more and more offline stores to uh, create home delivery kind of systems right so home deliveries and home demos were something which really helped us as a brand to connect back to our consumer and saying hey you know what we know you can't come to us but allow us to come to you and of course these are times i'm talking about when the government had sort of opened up these restrictions of uh, you know doing uh, deliveries or uh, reaching out to any individuals out right so i think these are the two biggest learnings as a brand that we had and um, you know we acted upon it and i think uh, fortunately we were sort of uh, able to uh, you know create some success out of that great great um uh, mr dhar coming to you uh, and understanding the changes in your category and and the way uh, your consumers have changed and and your your brand approach has changed give us a sense of the learnings that you have gathered yeah sure so uh, there are uh, i will uh, uh, segment my answers in two parts one is that uh, about the geography right and then uh, the second is on the consumption pattern so if you look at the geography so there has been a reverse migration trend in the tier 2 and the tier 3 towns so the kind of growths that we were witnessing in tier 2 and tier 3 has kind of doubled over the last you know couple of years and that's primarily driven more by the reverse migration of the working force right so that is one one interesting trend that we have seen and uh, it will also it is also interesting to know that uh, the asp difference between the tier 1 and the tier 2 and tier 3 towns is not much so so you the 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 high high value products are still are are definitely being preferred also in uh, t2 and t3 towns so so that's an interesting uh, uh, trend that we could observe the second one is in terms of the consumption pattern and here i would like to mention three key points a couple of them uh, uh, was also mentioned by uh, uh, mr satya so one is a very uh, high focus on health and hygiene and uh, since uh, we are uh, operating in this space in with water heaters and water purifiers category we have seen a, a, a higher traction over there and there has been a growth in recruitment in the category so basically the lower price products have been uh, you know uh, 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 really been lapped up and are showing a higher growth say for example an instant 3 liters is showing a much higher growth than uh, than than the storage water purifier similarly we have seen tremendous growth in the uv water purifiers so that is one you know one trend that i could see so it is helping in terms of the expansion and the penetration of the category that is one secondly it's about uh, you know people generally becoming more environment friendly or in environment conscious and they are also seeking uh, this value in in the products that you are offering right so in uh, some of the products that we have launched in the last one year have been uh, 
directed towards this proposition and have been really uh, appreciated by the consumers. The third part is about uh, the, with the increasing work from home, comfort and connectivity at home is of uh, paramount importance. So the adoption of connected products are uh, surely getting a boost uh, Due to the uh, due to this uh, la due to these last eighteen months, I think these are some key broad trends that uh, you know we could uh, decipher in the last eighteen months or so. Right, Mr. Arora, you've heard all of them and uh, and you have dealt with brands. Uh, uh, what are the take takeaways and observations that you would like to share? Uh, sure, thank you. Uh, actually, it was very interesting journey for us. Sir. Uh, last two years, of course, were very challenging for every company. Uh, we faced something which we never anticipated. We never forecasted that this something will happen. The first thing that happened with Tabula that we did is the key that we for us is adaptability. Yeah. We make sure that we adopt towards uh, the business that we are in. So at Tabula, primarily uh, we have two sides of uh, the businesses. One we have supply side, which are our publishers, and then we have demand side, which are advertisers. Uh, since you know we support for open web, it was very imperative for us. Uh, just to make sure that we support and stand with all our uh, publisher partners. So that was the first thing that we did. And thanks to all our partners, uh, we decided to sail together. We decided to be intact and we see how to face it together and build something which can be much more uh, better for the entire uh, media industry. The second side, which was uh, demand side, which is ad advertiser side. Uh, so at the Bula, we went back to basics. Okay, So we, we never spoke about eyeballs, visibility, clutter and clutter. We said, Everybody, uh, every business is important, and for every business to survive, it is important that performance will, will be the key. So we made sure that we molded ourselves, adopted to ourselves more of a performance side of the business, where we went back to certain important tools that we have. For example, we have something called Tabula Newsroom. Okay, so that's a beautiful uh, tool. That is actually a tool which help all editorial or writers uh, to to look at insights, which is actionable insights. Uh, which possibly tells us what consumer uh, is actually looking at open web, what people are reading across, where they are interacting. So, for example, what Mr. Uh, Sanwari was talking about, the people was talking about, you know, health, fitness, learning. So, all these insights we, we got to know there where in the open web where people are consuming it. Okay. So now we have no lot of data and data insights. Basis the same. We we made sure that we build certain strategies, and then we uh, also had a global initiative called creative shops, what Mr. Dharma was talking about, the creatives that we, want, we spoke about before. So we, what we did is we married the both together. We had a creative shop where we went back to all advertisers, told them that this is something that should work for you. This is data insights that we have. This is a strategy and this is how you can build your creative so that you get more performance. So end of the day, because everything was for us was uh, cost by acquisition, cost per lead, because everybody was in, in a survival mode. So that was one thing, uh, you know, that was um, very, very important for us to make sure. The other things, uh, of course, and then things were getting better. So then it was also our task just to make sure that we help make this uh, comeback for all the brands. So we made sure, so then we launched a product called High Impact Placement, where we made sure that we give visibility along with performance. So I think the only, uh, the key thing I would say during this point, through the learning, we evolved as much more stronger full funnel marketing platform. And for us, the key was success was just to make sure uh, to adopt and adopt fast and be together and work like a team. So that not from the supply side, not from editorial side, for example, all the key um, you know, industry experts sitting here, of course, uh, the, just to make sure that we you know, work together as, as industry as a whole, and then we make sure that we pull ourselves together. So, so that is good. And, and as we speak, we are sitting on Quarter and quarter, we're sitting on the best of the quarters ever globally, Tabula, as well as Tabula in India. So that was like a blessing in disguise. But thanks to all our publisher partners and uh, industry experts like yourself who are sitting there, who actually was there together to support. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Arora, for sharing these insights. You know, what has uh, what this uh, time has also done is uh, it's not only changed uh, uh, the consumers, the brand strategy, but also how brands spend and, you know, divide their budget, uh, it has also impacted that. That's my next question to Mr. Sethia, that, you know, if we look at the recent times uh, as, as, as a brand, as, as Cisco, how do you optimize and plan the 
budget uh, uh, allocation across the multiple digital channels. Also, with the same, uh, my, my follow-up question that, what are, are there any big gaps that you have seen in their offerings and what brands want? So I think uh, the first and the foremost thing here is that, um, you know, uh, as a marketeer, we used to always have this uh, golden allocation, I would say 70, 20, 10. Kisi ko bhi poochho, what is this? The person will say, and more so in the consumer durable space, I'm saying, insane. 70 was always ATL, 20 was BTL, and 10 was digital bhi kar lete hain thoda sa. You know, I think that was the sort of, uh, you know, a conversation um, till maybe 10 years back, uh, you know, but gradually because of the advent in terms of technology and digital uh, avenues, you know, things started changing. Now it's no more 70, 20, and 10 for sure. And at the same time, even the allocation within the digital uh, space is extremely dynamic. You know, you will not be saying that, okay, fine, this much portion is actually, uh, you know, contributing, say, to SEO or content or video or SEM, etc., because everything is extremely agile. And I think that's where we focus that, you know, more than allocating monies, you need to be very agile in terms of listening to what is happening around you in terms of digital uh, you know, response. Um, and see, I think everything need not be ROI based. I think that is something I strongly believe in because there is so much of performance that in this entire journey, you tend to become transactional because digital space is such, I mean, like by the very nature of the space, you know, and you don't even realize that, you know, you have been getting a lot of money and revenue, but where is the brand standing is, is it, you know, able to, you know, you know, go and put a narrative to the customer. So I think that's where I draw a line personally. And second is, um, I always try to keep at least a buffer of five to 10% of my overall budgets just to do some trial and error and failure. That is also okay, because unless and until you try new channels, new mediums, new avenues, I don't think there is going to be any learning. Otherwise, sab kuch Facebook, Instagram pe hi zindagi bhar ke liye. I think, you know, you will not be able to go beyond that. Now, as far as your, uh, you know, expectations and gaps are concerned, I think I have very fundamental issues, I would say, uh, you know, when you, when you look at the digital space that, uh, you know, broadly, I would say not everybody, but broadly, all the stakeholders, you know, they tend to talk and impress you and convince you with, you know, million impressions and million reach. Everything is million metric, right? There is nothing below that. Now, I think today, in today's time, it is so easy to reach that metric in no time. I mean, like I remember I was in real estate uh, and I was doing this digital campaigns and we used to actually wait when this golden number will be achieved. But today it happens like, like this in no time. So I think for me, that's, it's, it's like an eyewash for me, which I'm very, you know, uh, sort of, you know, uh, a little away from, I don't get impressed very easily. Um, I think uh, apart from that, uh, the only thing I have a small hiccup is the fact that, you know, uh, the kind of solutions are given to me are very, uh, you know, copy paste. I mean, like, you know, because I think it just works out on everybody, I think. So I think there has to be a specific narrative because I have seen so many partners coming in and the only thing that they change is on that first slide, they will put a Cisco logo. Now, I'm sure they will go to somebody else and the only thing that will change is from Cisco logo to some other logo, right? So I think that's a small uh, problem I have. I think when you are coming and approaching for a partnership, it needs to be like really thought through uh, and, and very, very relevant. Uh, not exactly, you know, driven by only numbers and, and transactions and million metrics. So that's where my response is. Absolutely true. Mr. Tiwari, I want to come to you here. Uh, your thoughts on this? I think uh, what I heard from uh, Amit, I think, uh, see, the, and that's what I always, personally, one thing which I agree with him, uh, this, see, this definition of ROI is very different from different individuals. And I personally feel as a marketer, it is not about return on investment. It's about return on insights and return on innovation. If you actually get a caveat only on investment, then obviously it will be the lowest denominator and the highest outcome that has come. It is just a simple mathematical tool that you can actually apply on any Excel. But I think when it comes to marketing and specifically when you talk about digital marketing and the space that you're talking about, it needs to have the calibration every now and then. What I used to do two weeks back may not be relevant today. What I used to do for an X category may not be relevant for Y. Otherwise, there will be only one simple spreadsheet and you don't require so much of detailing and deliberation what you need to look for it. 
So I think the entire consumer decision journeys have transformed into consumer digital journeys, and both has to marry together. Whether we call it an ROI or whether we call it insights or innovation driven, but the larger piece is in terms of how it is actually matching my objective of reaching the consumer, getting the getting that acquisitions at the lowest minimum cost but the maximum impact. That is what I would actually urge on this particular point. Right, Mr. Mani, um, um, the points were raised that you know the how agencies are pitching and with the same copy paste model and how the seventy twenty ten thing has changed. Tell me your your side of the story, the especially when the budget allocation across the multiple digital channels. What has changed? I absolutely changed? agree with Amit. Uh, you know when he said the seventy twenty ten was a typical ratio that we've all heard in our uh, in in our in our profession in this particular profession, especially being a digital marketing right from day one uh, of my profession. I think uh, you know I used to I used to fight with my bosses, uh, uh, especially with the the CMOs, right? I mean. I had to really convince them about why it's so important to put money on digital, right? So I, I, uh, the times have definitely changed. I think we've evolved uh, as marketeers about uh, digital is not just a, an alien within the marketing ecosystem. It is equally, um, you know, an equal brother or sister uh, with an ATL or a BTL as you want to name it as, right? So I think uh, there is no specific logic for us to put X dollars here versus Y dollars there. Uh, in HP, I think what we try and do is, and I think uh, somebody also mentioned earlier is about uh, what is the objective that you're running after. Right? I think that's for me is the most important part of the journey. Where I start, if if I'm lo if I'm looking at awareness as as the core KPI or as the core objective, right? I I know that I need to make sure that I reach out to places where number one I find the right kind of audience, and when I say the right kind of audience, is definitely somebody. Who will respond to what I'm trying to say? Right? I'm, I'm, I don't want to sort of beat around in the bush. I don't want to hit the arrow in the dark where I know that you know it's just a black hole. The money is going to go somewhere, but I don't know what happens at the end of the day. Minus the fact that you will definitely get some impressions and so-called clicks and visits at the number. Right? I wish somebody within the industry could run a campaign on um, cost per quality visit for that matter. I mean, of course, everybody runs a campaign called cost per visit, right? If somebody runs a campaign called cost per quality visit, I would love to run campaigns with, with that publisher or with that uh, organization, right? So I think as we evolve in terms of understanding the customers, the KPIs that we're running after should also change, right? I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's it's not about um, how many views do you get or it's not about how many people do you reach out. I think those are all input matrix. The more money that you put, the more views or so-called impressions that you get for your ads that you're showing, right? So I think uh, interactions, uh, I think, mm, I don't know. I mean, uh, I still, I, I'm still a sucker for, uh, you know, how many people have actually viewed more than 75% uh, of the video if, if video ad is what your objective is, right? So I think those are the few things that as an organization perspective, we run after uh, and, and we call them as fruitful KPIs and uh, objectives and targets being fulfilled, right? On the other hand, I also understand that it's important somehow, uh, you know, in the country that we live in, where we all talk about, say, and I'll give an example, a classic example of, um, say, IPL, right? Um, minus the brand name and everything that I'm keeping in mind. So uh, you know for a fact that today, if you try and leverage yourself on a platform like IPL, right? You have no idea who you're reaching out to because today in India, a kid at the age of 10 years versus a guy at the age of uh, an old man at the age of 60 years, everybody's watching cricket, right? I'm not sure whether, and if I'm trying to reach out to a, an audience segment within 18 to 25, I'm not sure who's watching my ad. I'm convinced with the fact that this audience is going to be a part of this overall audience who's watching the game because cricket today is a religion in the country. And if I as a brand, I'm jumping into it, kahi na kahi. I'm sure kuch na kuch to banda dekhi lega, right? So if we're today, the, the ways to look at it is if I'm running out, uh, if I'm running after a certain specific KPIs and, uh, you know, um, uh, objectives, I don't think jumping out in the well with everybody is the right way to go about it. You pick your battle, see what you want to do, convince your stakeholders. I think it's one of the most important things to do today as a digital marketer is to convince your stakeholders and tell them what's right and what's wrong. because we all, you know, sort of foray from those times where TV mein paisa laga diya, matlab, that is the epitome of success. Ho gaya kaam. Today is not the case. I'm, I just gave you an example of IPL. You guys will watch IPL, I'm sure, 
count the number of ads that you see if you don't have a premium subscription. And you will realize that every brand right from A to Z is part of cricket today because everybody wants to take an advantage. Yes, true. But are you getting your objectives and your KPIs fulfilled? I'm not 100% sure about that. So you will get a, get a lot of accolades within your organization about the, the MDs of the world telling you that, oh, yes, uh, we were present on the biggest uh, you know media moment today in the country. But at the end of the day, you know how many relevant people uh, were you able to reach out and what those, what those people are going to get you for your campaign session. Right, right. right. So, Spiteful, thanks for sharing your thoughts. Um, this is hurt to you. Uh, give me your yeah, sure. side of the story, yes. Yeah, so uh, obviously with the limited budgets during a tough period and with the digital uh, uh, adoption increasing, obviously the, the shifts in the the budget mix are really quite heavily skewed towards the uh, digital communication. So the challenge for, uh, for, for brands right now is to how to marry a great storytelling and finally aiding into a conversion. I think that is the challenge that we all, we all are facing as marketeers. So storytelling, which means building the brand at the various stages of the consumer digital journey, as we, uh, uh, as we call it these days, and how are you, aiding that uh, storytelling in terms of getting a conversion and actually acquiring a lead so that's a that, that's the you know that's the biggest challenge that we are facing and we we have to work towards it in terms of you know the, the various uh, touch points that we have digitally as well as offline i would i, I would not uh, exclude offline from here uh, at all because it's it's still a very very important part of the of the mix so we have to see that how this, uh, you know, the, the overall all seamlessness of communication takes place, which results in a, in a consumer acquisition. I think that's the, that's the biggest challenge. And we have to understand, very clearly define the objectives that uh, our campaigns are uh, designed for and, and, uh, and measure those uh, objectives in a very agile manner, as I also mentioned earlier on a day to day basis and see what are the you know changes that we need to do so basically it's the creative challenge and the effectiveness challenge i think that's that, that is what we are facing right now and that is what we have to address <clears throat> right um, mr arora to you uh, when it comes to go to marketing channels uh, uh, what are brands doing right what are they doing wrong uh, um, what is your take on this? I think I will talk about what they're doing right, basically because I have, we see a shift in the change. Okay, people are, especially marketer, are much more insightful. Data is something that everybody is looking at, uh, you know, in, in depth. Whatever I am, so what uh, Mr. Sanwari was talking about, how MDs, you know, come back and then saying this is what is required. But so we see the great shift that is, you know, prevailing in terms of the digital marketers. You know, understand. Uh, each and every data piece, they understand what they, they they would like to target, what is their clear objective, and what expectations that we have from a specific publisher. So that's the reason you see a shift uh, coming from uh, wall gardens to open web, where you know it is very very clear and evident that the metrics is beyond reach. It is talking about the right targeted audience. It is also talking about right ROI. The ROI could be uh, views, it could be uh, any specific leads slash acquisition but in terms of awareness in terms in terms of each funnel so in if we, i remember when you used to talk about a lot of marketers and brands are talking about specific reach he used to get what mr uh, uh, amit chetia was talking about you know if you want to have reach one facebook can give you xyz for example i, I don't want to name and publisher but generally so one publisher can give you immense reach but things are much beyond uh, right now where people are talking about the full funnel approach they're looking at what right eyeballs uh, visibility that you're getting as per the objective they require what exactly interaction they're getting out of it that idea funnel is being tracked properly and the matrix is so clear that it is much easier for publisher like us to measure that to go back uh, show that reports and make sure that you know uh, it's like a is a space where like a win-win for, for for both publisher as well as advertisers so that's the great right. shift that we've seen. Right. So at this point, I have some audience questions. Uh, we have around 10 minutes left, uh, more than that. 
I want to uh, take the first question and uh, start with you, Mr. Sikhia, that uh, uh, what factors uh, do you look at before choosing the right marketing tool? Uh, what factors do I look at? See, um, see, there are a couple of factors that are very crucial for us to, you know, sort of uh, consider before we decide, you know, as to which channel we are supposed to swing towards. But uh, more than anything else, while we talk about those factors, you know, it is very important for us. And, and these typically are, you know, from the digital side, actually, because, you know, it gives you so many opportunities to go and create your narratives. So I think that only thing that I look at is, is it able to, uh, you know, grab the attention of the consumer, the end consumer that I'm chasing within three seconds or not. If it is able to, you know, do that, that is where I, I bet my money there and say, okay, fine, let's go and try. Otherwise, there are various other, um, you know, objectives that are, you know, looked at, long format, short format, etc., cetera, et cetera, you know, which, you know, side of the funnel, with the top, bottom, middle, these are the regular ways. My point is, the, I know for a fact that the attention span is actually coming down drastically. You know, there were days when we were talking about 10, 15 seconds, and today we are talking about three seconds. I mean, like, imagine the, the decrease that has come to us now in terms of timelines. So I think these are a couple of things that we look at before we decide on any marketing channel. All right. Mr. Wari, uh, there's another question I'll combine the two. So one is, uh, how do brands, uh, what are the best ways that brands uh, can choose the right marketing tool? And also, with the festive uh, season kicking in, you know, everybody is aggressive on uh, promotion. So there's a lot of noise around and a lot of good communication gets lost in this noise. How can brands ensure that they stay afloat, they reach their consumers, uh, uh, you know, heart, despite all the no noise around? These two questions. So first come first is, uh, I think, Rohil, the bigger thing is before you choose a tool, choose your objective tool will follow, but you need to actually decide what the objective is. There are empty number of tools that you can even list your entire particular listing of an Excel will finish, but your tools will not finish. But what is the my affinity tool that I require for my objective? Even for one particular organization, you may require five or six different tools, depending upon what the objective that you, what happens is most often because tools, technology sounds very fancy that adds a lot of, um, which you call as a, as a very glamorous world called mark tech, which adds a lot of grammar to the entire but your objective is not in terms of selection of the tool. Your objective is in terms of selection of objective that you need to fulfill. You are responsible for a function which has to deliver that objective. So select your objective first. Tool can obviously decide what you need to do. Coming to the second question is, yes, there will be noise. And obviously, if you see the number of, I don't remember the exact number, but in, in actual calculation, it is around close to 47% of the brands that have increased in the festival uh, presence last year on digital as a platform. This time, it will be much more. At least, if not more, 10% more than what we have last year. How you can actually be is in terms of, again, getting into the right format that you need to be. And I think I, I like one of the uh, uh, propositions somebody was talking about, and I think Adil was talking about is in terms of, you can reach to end number of people, but that particular reach is your particular reach, or you want an affinity reach for your particular audiences to build it. Second thing, which is most important, you have to be extremely creative, not only from a creative standpoint of cre delivering a good creative, but you need to be very creative in terms of delivering that good creative. So that people can actually have, if you are able to get one particular eyeballs to your creative, I think your job is done because you will never get a chance to get a second eyeball because your window is very less. You, you hardly get a window of around 35, 40 days to actually exhibit what you need to be. So these are my two bits on these two questions. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Tiwari. Mr. Tiwari, quickly to you, um, both the questions, uh, marketing tool and then making your campaign still relevant and on top of the you know recall. You know, on a marketing tool front, I think uh, make data your best friend. As a marketer, I think there's nothing better uh, better than, uh, you know, having uh, the tons and tons of data that today you're sitting in that, that as an organization, you can have the capability or make that infrastructure available for yourself. Right? I think there is a beautiful story that you can create from even uh, one bit of small data point that you have for your customer, right? I mean, that is something that at HP, uh, we try and uh, strengthen ourselves for making sure that we have enough data and whatever data that we get, uh, all the decisions that we take uh, is based on that data, right? So be it be your, uh, you know, your sentiments, be it be the past campaigns that you've done, be it be your search trends, uh, be it be, you know, your 
expense for that matter, right? You will have all that data available for, uh, for you to utilize. And I think once you have that, the kind of decision making that you can do basis that, and it's not about a specific tool or, or uh, you know, about a specific vehicle. I think for that matter, if the data tells you to just do email marketing, trust me, it will work for you, right? So don't be a fashionista. Uh, don't be somebody who likes to, uh, it, it's just about buying a, buying a really fancy car, but uh, not investing enough in the driver, right? So uh, buy the data, I'm sorry, I mean, uh, spend more in creating that infrastructure that can give you a better result for your campaigns, number one. Number two, on the, on the storytelling part is what I initially said, right? Uh, uh, I think at, at one point in time, all of us had this question about long format videos, right? I and mean, all of us were after running after do a 10 seconder, do a 12 seconder, you know, because nobody has time we are slightly different from that perspective. If the story is good, people will make time, right? They will definitely, and that's what we've realized in the past couple of campaigns that we've done on Diwali is both those videos were more than three minutes, right? Uh, we've gotten a great response on it. So don't worry about what the world tells you in terms of, you know, uh, shorter format and this and that. Amit also beautifully said, right? Unless you try it, you will never, never realize whether it's working out for you or not, right? So try those long formats, work on, uh, you know, a great communication, an engaging communication, a storytelling, and I guarantee you, uh, it will work for you. Uh, Mr. quickly to you, your thoughts? No, so I, I would uh, definitely second uh, what uh, Mr. Sanwari was saying. And uh, it, what we need to do very clearly is that uh, we need to... Uh, uh, have a very powerful creative that is uh, that is definitely there, and that creative should reflect the sentiments that the consumer is right now experiencing, and that is that is extremely important. And when we are talking about festivities, it has to reflect the overall consumer sentiments. So the brand should leverage and be a part of the consumer's life rather than you know giving them some kind of a communication which may not, may or may not uh, be uh, reflecting the sentiments of the consumer. So that is that. Is is definitely one and uh, the second in terms of the tool selection of course i mean you need to set your objectives clear kpis and keep on fine tuning the plan continuously for the next say if it's a there's a window of 45 days you need to be really agile in terms of understanding the mix of the digital channel which one is giving you the right objective delivery and uh, which one is more expensive, which is giving you, uh, you know, uh, more efficiency. You need to know all these things very clearly. And the data is there for you to see spe uh, specifically in digital communication. And, uh, and do the, your tweak so that you optimize your ROI. So that's the, that's the approach that we need to take. Perfect. Um, Mr. Arora, quickly to you, uh, on this part of, uh, you know, standing out and getting noticed, uh, amidst the noise that uh, festive promotions have. What are your two bits about it? I think uh, going forward, this festival season, I think uh, it will be more about telling than selling. Uh, so st storytelling to the right audience at the right selling. time. I like this, wonderful, yes. Yeah, so storytelling to the right audience at the right time, at the right place is, I think, is the, is the key. I, I believe content will play a very, very important role in this entire decision life cycle. Where, uh, everyone is so tired of you know uh, watching screens these days. Uh, so, so the right content recommendation uh, is, I think, will be the I think the new king or the queen of this festive season, where you need to hit hard and hit at right time to right audience. Because as I said, everybody is so tired because everything your your entire decision cycle is is you're searching on mobile, you're searching on desktop, and then you're buying it online itself. So journey has to be, so you, you touch base with them, get the right ball at right context, and then close it. Right, right. Perfect. My final question to all of you is that we have a lot of uh, marketeers, digital marketeers who are, who are part of this uh, discussion, who are listening to us right now. To everyone, one closing thought that you would like to share with them, uh, starting with you, Mr. Sethi. One closing thought, okay. So it would be very simple. Uh, before you are a marketer, you are a customer. So please ensure you wear your customer hat before you decide anything. That's it. Wonderful. Mr. Tiwari. I think uh, before a digital marketer, you are a marketer. And for that, your consumer decision journey should match to your consumer digital journeys. 
if these two are actually talking to each other your job is done wonderful uh, mr sanwari i think uh, it's my personal experience and i think i would uh, you know urge all the digital marketers today to sort of adhere to it is don't run after this entire sham of digital is a very fast word and you you should keep changing creatives and keep amending your plans every now and then it doesn't work out like that give it its its own time it will happen you will get to know in a few days whether it's working or not so don't any don't let anybody convince you about the fact that hey you know what you keep changing creatives every day and it's going to work wonders for you it does not work wonders for anybody for that matter Lovely. Yeah, my uh, two bits will be uh, matching content to intent. So basically, segment the consumer journey, devise your creatives as per the 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 stages of awareness, interest, desire, and action, and follow a systematic path, understanding the consumer's sentiments at each stage and providing him the right inputs so that he can take the right decision. I think that's that's the key. <clears throat> lovely content and intent and telling the worth the telling i mean wonderful and finally to you mr arora uh, final thought i think full funnel approach uh, as what mr dhar was talking about so looking at from a visibility perspective uh, coming down to the that purchase perspective uh, it is very important for for every marketer and everybody uh, even from publisher side is to uh, look at that perspective very closely and match that out so that we everybody is learning right now we have to learn relearn evolve uh, and then keep doing it so i think the second option is i'll say it's going to be innovation uh, expand and experiment and innovation for uh, during festive season where people uh, behavior are changing people are trying to so for example there's a concept called uh, ribbon tourism where people are suddenly going out so we see behavior as they is going in different directions altogether so it is very very important from my perspective to keep innovating keep experimenting with with the stuff especially digital because it's very dynamic what what adu was saying so that i think holds true and this should be the key for this festive season thank you so much uh, thank you mr dekhya uh, mr tiwari mr sanwari mr dar uh, mr arora i i'm sure that uh, a lot of the audience has uh, i mean taken away a lot of critical insights as we enter the festive mood and uh, we will continue our efforts to bring in more such uh, virtual for now round tables where we have experts with us thank you everyone for joining us today and we hope to see you soon thanks yeah. rohit thank you so much we've been fabulous thank you so much everybody yes, so much it was a fabulous interaction thanks a lot bye thank, thank you everyone so. have a nice evening take care bye